Welcome everybody to Unfiltered with Pastor David. Pastor David, good afternoon. Hey, John. Again, thank you for tuning in. Pastor, the question I want to ask today, you know, uh, being able to be serving in the ministry, I, I'm able to encounter different people that attend different fellowships. And one of the things that I've noticed is that oftentimes they're, they're stamped with the personality of their pastor. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it, it, it has a, a distinct stamp and you can often tell who their pastor is. As a pastor yourself, is there a stamp that you want to put on the congregation or how does that stamp affect the church? Well, I would be very careful. That's an interesting question. In the way, in the way you posed it, I would first respond by saying I, I wouldn't want my stamp to be on them at all. I mean, that's not, that's not the, um, obviously that wouldn't be the reason that I would want to be influencing them. So. On the one hand, I don't think that uh, the pastor necessarily intentionally stamps the congregation. And yet on the other hand, you know, like has a tendency of begetting like. And so people will come to a church that has a, uh, a minister, we'll say, who, who they, they respect, love, admire, but in many ways, we'll add, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they identify with him because they're similar to him. Mm -hmm. There are things that he may say that they would say, well, yes, I agree, and things like that. And what happens over time is what they're hearing from the pulpit is either going to appeal to them or it's going to repel them. Normally, we have a tendency of, of going places and listening to those that that are pretty much like us or like one of our friends. So that's just, that's pretty much a normal thing. And, and so you can encounter people from different fellowships and you, very often you can, you can tell where they came from if you're familiar <laughs> with the churches. I've done that over the years more than once. I've prayed with people in the past and I've heard the way they pray and I recognize this pastor. Uh, I've spoken to people and They'll say certain things, and I recognize another pastor. It's just uh, they learn the ways of, and very often they learn the, um, the personality of the pastor. It's appealing to them, and, and, and so they're a bit conformed to it. So, yeah, it's, it's a very common thing, and it doesn't take a long time for me under normal circumstances if I'm speaking to somebody to... Uh, to hear that they go to this fellowship, and I'll, I'll say to myself, I'll say, yeah, I would, have, I would have thought that. So yeah, it's very common that the people begin to be molded into a similar image as the one who influences them mm. the most. The things that matter to him are things that they learn to have matter to them. They may have already had a certain sense that this is important, but it only develops it further. If he is a very open person, very often they're open. If he's, if he's angry about something, very often they're angry about the same thing. If he has a, a compassionate heart, very often they develop a compassionate heart. I've seen that many times. And so the interests of the pastor and the way that he teaches and the things that he says and his opinions that he expresses, they will find a ready audience very often and that audience is going to be, over time, similar mm -hmm. to him. And does that have a direct effect on the church itself, that particular church? It's interesting because, as you are mentioning, I remember when <clears throat> I was attending a, a specific church many years ago, and they went out for evangelism. And the church that I was a part of many, many years ago, as part of the men's home that I was in, was a very hellfire and brimstone. Mm -hmm. And so those who are going out and doing the door-to-door -door evangelism was doing that same type of, I don't want to say behavior, but what they learned mm -hmm. from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And uh, and not that the, the the word of God didn't go out, it was just the approach. And I, and I saw something there thinking, that's pretty aggressive, yet the gospel still went out. But yet I, I understand when, when you say that, that there is a stamp that can be put on, whether it's unintentional or not, it's just going to be, the like you said, like beget, like. Mm -hmm. But does that have a direct effect 
to the church itself. It certainly does. I really feel that the pastor should be seeking the Lord to be conformed to his image. And so when you're reading your scriptures from old to the new, uh, especially as it pertains to the methodologies of Jesus, the words of Jesus, and you know the things that he said, when you begin to ask the Lord to mold you into his image, to conform you into his image, again, a lot of times people will see one thing about him and like that. So in Matthew 23, Jesus says, you whitewashed tombs or <laughs> you brood of vipers, like John the Baptist said. They, they will have a, a kinship to that. And so, yeah, there are, there are churches, and I've been around the same ones that you have in that, in that regard. And, and there's only one way, and that's with your pedal all the way to the metal, you know, and, <laughs> and you're going to go to hell. There are others who have a, dent, a different kind of approach. It just depends, you know. Pastor Chuck Smith influenced quite a number of people, but there, there are very few people who can model themselves after his model. This is a man who taught so many times through the Bible, mm -hmm. went to Israel 66 times, wow. you know, so many years of ministry in his life, traveled as an evangelist and all. He had so much experience, and he had such a gentle way and compassionate and grace-filled way not everybody has that ability, that maturity is capable of doing those kinds of things. We have a tendency, I think, of being influenced by those that, again, are pretty much like us. And mm -hmm. so I admired things in Pastor Chuck. I want to teach through the Word, but I'll never be a Chuck Smith. I just have to be a David Rosales, you know. So I think that uh, it's, it's important for us to discover who we are. Because right. at one time, I... Uh, when this church began, I, I didn't know who I was going to be. I actually thought that way. I thought, what is my model? I knew that there was no way that I could be a Chuck Smith. I was 30 years old. Um, I, I didn't want to be an evangelist, and I didn't want to be an exhort. I didn't know what to be. And I prayed a lot, John. I honestly did. Father, who am I supposed to be? And the answer came back very clearly and very obviously, be yourself. Be yourself. You know, Paul speaks concerning the body. Not every, not every portion of it is an eye or an ear, right? A hand or whatever. The body is made up of many members, but it's one body. So you just need to know what portion of the body you are, what your gifts may be, and just be... Um, be honest with those gifts and just exercise them as you do. Again, I, I encounter people from various fellowships. The central thing is, are they being taught the Word of God? Are they being conformed into the image of Christ? Because I, I, will, see, I will see either that or I will mm -hmm. see and hear the opinions of their pastor. Some of them are the most argumentative people you're going to encounter. Sometimes there's an, uh, I'm sad to say, there's an arrogance that you encounter. And then there are other times that you, you'll encounter a loving, grace-filled person. And you know that they have a shepherd that has been influencing them to those things. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you, you become conformed pretty much to the one who influences you the most. Well, thank you, Pastor. That's interesting uh, because as you're saying that, there's a, as you mentioned, there's always a bet to not always, but a lot of the people I've come across, they're either bent to one side and, it, and it's kind of their focus. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I thought that was something interesting to ask you about because you can, as long as you spend some time with them, you can spend, see, you'll, you'll, pick, it up. you'll pick it up. And so, yeah. well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing and I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Just a couple of updates or a couple of things that we have coming up. We have our uh, December 18th, we have the Katinas coming out, yeah, that's and they'll be doing uh, both our worship services that Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.45. If you guys have never heard the Katinas live, you guys have to come on out, and, and what a great opportunity to invite your friends and family uh, to worship with us, not only in the Word, but in worship. And, uh, and then after that, we have our Christmas Services coming up. We have our Christmas Eve. Week, yeah. yeah, that Saturday night service, we'll have it at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then we have our two services on Sunday, that mm -hmm. Sunday morning, 8.30, 10.45. Uh, great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come on out. And then this Sunday, we do have our regular services at 8.30 a.m. and 10.45, as 
you're continuing to take us through the book of Mark. That's right. And so we look forward to having you guys come out. I always want to make a plug for Israel. You can still register for Israel 2023. That will be in March. If you want any more information about that, you can go to our website. Amen. And Pastor, thank you so much for your time. All right, John. Thank you guys for tuning in, and God bless you.